Hi everyone, it's Tuesday the 10th of December and it has just gone 9.30 in the evening and we're going to talk model railways again. It's going to be quite a regular topic I think um, for a little while at least. Um, I've got a few things right here in the kitchen I want to show you then I want to go in the bedroom and explain and try and show you my plan to squeeze a, a nice sized layout into the bedroom. So, first, let's have a look and see what I've been uh, myself to. So, bought this this afternoon actually. <laughs> it is the City Industrial. Um, majority of it is there, it's not 100% complete, but uh, that doesn't bother me. A lot of the um, telegraph poles and things are missing. The points track is missing. It doesn't matter. I've got plenty. Uh, I think the little curve is missing. I think. I haven't checked the um, curves yet. But apart from that, the rest of it is there. There's no track mat, but I don't want the track mat anyway. Um, we will have a closer look at that. Actually, let's have a closer look at that. Instead of switching back and forth. Um, the box... I'm not likely to keep just because I do not have the room. Um, if I had like a big loft space or something, a big attic space, then I would keep boxes for things like this. But uh, I don't, unfortunately. So here we go, we've got the instructions with it. So Look at that for you. There we go. You see it's got all the wagons. I've got a selection of uh, more freight wagons. I've got another box car. I've got a truck. And I've got this one. With its load. The load is here as well. It's here. Just dropped a bunch of signs and things on the floor. Um, There's someone sitting down and someone that looks like he's shoveling coal. Train operators, maybe? Is that what they're supposed to be? You know, or the train driver and fireman, maybe? Um, I do have some more little huts and things in here. So, I'm just wondering what that is. Yeah, that's the load for that. That just sits on there like that. I've only got the one telegraph pole, but I have got a bunch of them in my box of stuff anyway, so. Um, another controller. I think I've got four of these controllers now. All the straight track is there, I believe. The larger curves are there. And the power supply, so. If the locomotive runs, I wouldn't see any reason it shouldn't, unless it just needs a good old clean. Um, that's where the load is meant to be. And I've got a good little set. I've actually got two of these now, because the Caledonian Bell came with one of these little blue coaches. So, right. Because I don't want bits going everywhere. Let's see if I can get this back into here. week I made an eBay purchase. I am a little bit pissed. Not with the seller. It's not the seller's fault. But as you can see, this has been dropped on that corner. It's actually split the box right there. So I'm hoping what's in here has not been damaged. But uh, I went on eBay and I bought, I think it was seven locomotives as spares or repairs. Because I like fixing things. My stepdad likes fixing things. So I thought, why not? So, I need to get some new blades for this knife. I did have some, but for some reason they don't fit. <laughs> um, 
there's like little notches in the top of the blade for it to lock in place and the blades I've got the notches are, are too small so go that's gonna be my eBay invoice in a Hornby box as well and turned inside out right well it's well packaged and to be honest there isn't really anything in this corner apart from a huge wad of um, bubble wrap I can't believe I forgot the name of that but uh, oh I see he's wrapped up the cold tenders separately okay I was getting a bit puzzled I thought there's a lot more here than I remember buying I was sort of thinking has he uh, sent me the wrong parcel might actually go and get a, yeah well bear with me a second scissors are going to be easier I think might just uh, open it up like so oh I just missed the toe hook on that right So in theory, if I just go snip, it doesn't cut because my blade is crap. I tried looking for a, a better blade, but I just don't have one. So I think this is just the cold tender for... Yeah, that's the cold tender for my Southern Britannia that I bought. See if I can actually find it so I can open it together. Yeah, it's not that one. Yes. Not that one, they go together, it's not that one. Find it. Here's my Royal Britannia that I bought. Some of these um, the seller described as running, but they are either noisy. Um, all the wheels have sparked and my stepdad told me sparking wheels can be caused by wheels out of the wrong side. The older Hornby wheels are a little bit um, too wide. So here's my Britannia. The uh, Southern Britannia. That there is actually quite a lot of weight in that. So I've got another large steam loco as well. I am going to take these down to Mum's tomorrow, so my stepdad can have a little play. Apart from this one, because he doesn't know I've got this one. This one is the Flying Scotsman. The locomotive only, I haven't got the wagons, but I thought I'd give him this one as a Christmas present. So there's the Flying Scots. And this is the cold tender with something rattling around in it. I was still in view. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what that is, but oh, I see the pegs on on the loco itself. It's different on my Britannia. Britannia is in need of a little bit of repair there. It's very well detailed though. So, flying Scotsman. I thought my stepdad might appreciate that. So. Right, I believe. No, nope, that's my Ginty. So that one is my other 08. I've got two 08 diesel shunters. One of them is a runner. Again, I can't remember whether it said noisy wheel, noisy um, motor or sparking wheels or so. Right, this is the one that actually runs. Apparently. 
cosmetically it doesn't look too bad. It's got a buffer missing, but I'm sure I can scrounge one of those up from somewhere. So it's got the buffer missing from there. It's got the metal hook missing from there. But I can replace that whole bit anyway, so rear one's bent. Not anymore, I've straightened that up. I'm sure, uh, I know my stepdad runs um, DCC, but I'm, he's got a uh, DC controller there, so I'm sure we can set something up on a bit of track just to play with these on. But this should be my British Rail Blue 08, which actually looks like it's got a bit of weathering. I'm not sure if that is actually weathering or dust. This one was sold as non-running and it's got all the buffers missing. Which is not going to be an issue, I don't think. Non-running, that could be... Well, the wheels are absolutely disgusting, I've just noticed on that. I don't know if you can see that, but they are filthy. That could be just as simple as that, dirty wheels. I won't know. But uh, yeah, they are absolutely disgusting, them wheels. <laughs> Right, next one. Can't get into it. So, well, I think I've uh, escaped disaster with these being uh, damaged. I quite like the look of this one, and it has got the um, crew on it. Look at that. It's got the driver and fireman on it. It's my little ginty. Again, have absolutely disgusting wheels on. These have actually got uh, quite large wheels, and I bet that's why they're sparking. So there's my little ginty. Now, others. Let's have a look. That's because that's my DMU diesel, multi diesel multiple unit. This one, I can't remember what the this one. I can't remember what the diesel loco was. Um, I know it needed a bit of work on it. Is that class 33, I think? Okay. Yeah, I see some cracking on that. Body, but I'm sure I could probably find out another 33 body if I wanted. Oh, it's only popped out of place, that's all. Just needs a bit of a, a bit of gluing on that lid. Yeah, that's what it needs. It needs putting into place like that and a bit of glue. And my stepdad's got just the glue to fix that. Or oh, could do a motor upgrade on that one as well. So, nice diesel. Nice diesel. Now these two are all part of the same thing because like I said they're DMA, DMUs. But that explains why this one was um, rather light when I picked it up. Because uh, this one is not the driven unit. This one's just a roller. So here we go. There's one end. Yep, and uh, there is lights added to this one. I can see a light in there. That's not going to show up, but there is a light inside this one. So there's one half of the dip. Something sliding around. <laughs> Here's the motorised part, and uh, the description again was, uh, I think, sparking wheels. That seemed to be the complaint with uh, most of the locomotives the seller was auctioning off. Um, and trust me, even as spares or repairs, these were you know, not cheap price. Although I think the most I spent was about 20 quid on a loco. There we go. There's my DMU. And I did vow that when I was going to start this that I would have at least one DMU and a little diesel shunter like that, but I've ended up with two. And a few other various ones. B 
be nice to get that ginty working, wouldn't it? Right. Uh, yeah, I can see the wires for the lights on this unit as well. But can I see the light? Well, there's definitely something hanging in there. Can't wait to get that one up and run. I've always liked DMUs, but I'm actually curious. Curious to know how filthy these are. <laughs> That's just off the ginny. Oh yeah, these are going to need one hell. Ugh. And that is without using any isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol. So, let's just have a look at the non-runner, shall we? Just as I suspect the Mercated. Filthy. <laughs> yeah. I'll take these down to my mum's tomorrow apart from that one. I need to find a box to put that in. So really I bought myself one, two, three, four, five, six locomotives. It's a shame the seller hasn't got any more. He had loads. Um, there was a nice red one. You know, one this sort of size. But I got outbid on that one, unfortunately. Because I would have liked that one. But never mind, you win some, you lose some. He had another one of these um, Southern Britannias. But without the red detailing done, this one had all the detailing done. And she's even got... This... You've got the lamps added on the front as well. I don't know why both of them are red, but... Oh! And it's got the crew, so I was right. Those two figures in the um, Hornby set are the, um, the driver and fireman. I do like that one. Oh, I can see straight through the chimney, straight through the bottom. I didn't realise it. Right. Put my coat tender back on. Look what, I've always had a thing for these little low eights. Well, that one's done in um, British Rail blue. Probably could do with a bit of paint touching up because it's a bit warm there. But then again, if I weather it, it's going to look more the part, isn't it, with the warm paint? And uh, my stepdad's actually got one like this as well. I wonder if I could find the buffers. or just find up some more, perhaps, bust locomotives that I can pinch the buffers from. Because obviously, if they fall off, then they must be able to uh, go back on. I think my DMU was uh, 15 quid, something like that. I think my, my cheapest three were these three anyway. They were less than 10 pounds, especially the non-running 08. Anywho, I don't want this video to run on too long, so I'm just gonna detach you from the tripod. Preferably without losing my uh, securing nut. Got one last look before we disappear into the bedroom. Yeah, it did say this side I had some damage to the plastic. It's just come unstuck. That's all that's happened. I just need some super glue on there to glue it back on. That'll be a nice little unit. been wondering for a few weeks now or rather trying to think up of a way to rearrange this whole bedroom so I could get a bigger railway layout in here um, it wouldn't be a bad sized one under the bed and I could still go for that one but which would actually save all the hassle of changing this bedroom round but 
I want a bigger base. <laughs> um, and I thought if I'm going to do it, I might as well go to my, you know, the max size that this room will allow. You know, saves changing my mind halfway through building one to slide under the bed. So, my plan will be to start on this side. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove all of this slot. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to reuse that, but I'm not reusing the TV cabinet. That and that is going to go, and I'll have to put all of this get all the games and consoles and things, probably stack them over there for the time being. Uh, these two shelves are going to be slid along so the end panel lines up with the end of the shelf so the other display dewicky is going to disappear. Uh, and I'm going to build like a custom desk in here like I've got behind me and on it I'll reset that PC with the you know, the PS2 and the video DVD combo and whatnot on it. And uh, pretty much exactly where it is right now. Uh, followed by this TV there, or I might get a smaller one yet, I don't know. But the current plan, it will fit this. So somewhere there with the consoles, I'll add shelves underneath the desk as well, like this pretty much. Um... Followed by my computers from over here. So um, really my intention would be just to move these ones on top. I don't really need to worry about the ones underneath. Because uh, this bench is actually going to stay where it is. Um, but I just basically need this top bit cleared. So the computers will go over here. Windows 95 on top as it is with the monitor on top and... I'll put a shelf just below it, deep enough just to hold the Viglin here, which is on Windows 3.1. Uh, and I'm going to use my four-way KVM switch. So I've got a KVM switch there I'm going to put on eBay because I no longer need it. As I'm changing what I want to do. And uh, there it is, by the way. And I'm hoping I can also stand somewhere under here. It doesn't have to be directly under the PC. But I'm hoping I can design the whole area where I can actually stand at least two, maybe three other PCs. Yeah, I was trying to work out. I've got a full way KVM switch, haven't I? Um, but I need to make enough room so the tallest type of case I've got, which is that one, will, uh, I think it's that one. No, it's the one in the middle. There is one hiding in the middle. So basically so I can slide that one under as well. So that one's going to be my height guide for the shelf. I think... I've got that shelf there, but I do believe I could... Yeah, I would be able to do it with a shelf under it for that. Um, yeah, so that's going to work out quite nice actually. Might even get two shelves under it so I can put the Windows 2000 there on it as well. So all I'd have to do is just perhaps change um, a KVM cable every once in a while. But uh, yeah, then the rest, I'll take this corner bit out as well. That'll be going once I've cleared all of that bit. But everything else will be staying right where it is. Then I need to put either a custom bench about the same height as this. I might actually make it just a smidge lower. <coughs> um... I might join it up to the, the desk that I'm going to build in there. I might not. I might reuse this over there and just cut the legs down so it's lower. Um, so all I'd have to do is just take a hacksaw to the legs. And what I might do is actually make it so it sits on that bottom shelf and just stick it there. And the uh, record player, this one, will sit on top of it on the end furthest from the bed and speakers one will go up there where my Dennis fire engine model is and as I'll be moving that shelf along the long one if I can if not it'll have to be the shorter one up there the speaker will go on the end of that up there as well so it means running in a few cables but it's no biggie uh, 
The tapes I'll probably put on a shelf over there as well. Same with the CDs, I could stand those over there. Which will then pretty much leave this whole area clear because I'm selling that. Uh, the wall will then be clear. And the idea is I'll put a batten, quite a deep batten, so it's coming out from the wall a good distance, I don't know, about a quarter of a foot, maybe half a foot from the wall. Same at the top, and the board will hinge. So I can fold it, well, it'll latch at the top. There'll be a latch probably at one end just to hold it up there, maybe both ends. Unlatch them, fold it down, it'll have some folded up legs on, you unfold the legs, comes down to here like this. It's going to be an eight by four foot, so I think four foot is going to be somewhere there. So it's not going to come too far into the the bedroom, is it? But um, four foot is going to be my max limit anyway. So I'm basically going to use a four foot by eight foot piece of plywood. I'm going to go to B&Q and buy one. Um, I don't know where eight foot's going to come though. That's the thing. That's why I don't know if I'm going to be able to use that long shelf over there. Because um, I need to leave about that much space down here so I can just shuffle down there and get to that side of the layout as well I don't think going down the back is going to be too much of a problem if it is then I might just have to cut a little hole in the middle of it which I don't really want to do because I'm going to lose space so yeah that is how I plan to do it but that's not going to happen until after Christmas now or at least New Year because, uh, like I said, I need to get things built and whatnot first, and things shunted around and moved and got rid of, and yeah, I've already got rid of a bunch of junk out of this flat. But, uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm happy, I've got some nice locomotives there. I might actually have a play with them on a bit of track and see if I can clean the wheels up and get them working. Anyway, on that note, Thanks a lot for watching. I will talk to you all again soon. Bye.